you are new to Snowflake, you may feel a bit overwhelmed with the amount of possibilities it offers. There's truly a lot of them. Today I will show you everything you need to know to get started with Snowflake. We'll go step by step through Snowflake user's interface, also known as Snowsite. So by the end of this video, you should be able to navigate it and perform basic operations. First of all, I need to say that Snowsite is a new version of a user interface. Previously, there was an interface called Classic Console, so don't be surprised when you see it in some older videos or articles. In this video, we'll go through Snowsite only, as a Classic Console is a more like a legacy interface. So, as every user interface, Snowsite can help you to simplify your work. You can run queries, create dashboards, manage account, check your data's performance, and many, many more. But for a more technical stuff, you would need to use an SQL. If you have your trial account already set up, you are ready to log in. You will see Snowsite homepage. You can change your theme, so of course you should pick a dark mode. The left sidebar is your main navigation tool. We'll go step by step through each of them, but first let's check role in the left bottom corner. This is the most important step um, because if you are unable to find some tab or object, it might be related to insufficient privileges. So let's check it. And so in, in a case like this, always check it if role you are using has a proper access. This is so common, so really take this advice to your heart. I will be using account admin, which is default, uh, the most powerful role in Snowflake, but in reality, you would use that one only for initial setup of your environment and create other roles. As this is a built-in role, it is recommended to use it as short as possible. You can also check your account here. Um, I have two accounts connected. Um, so like the first one is, is, is my main one. The second one is the, the trail account. Um, you can um, check uh, your organization, uh, the cloud uh, in, on which uh, the Snowflake is, is hosted, uh, region of it, uh, addition and also the locator to, to use it um, to connect for some external applications. And also you have like some support my profile, which is just like typical settings for, for your profile and appearance if you would like to change it in the future to light or, or system or, or dark, which is basically the same, some links to the documentation, etc. Okay, so first let's jump into the project tab. Here you can find the worksheets, which is basically the main tab for data engineers, uh, data analysts, ba basically all the developers, because here you can check, uh, basically it's uh, the sheet uh, where you run SQL code or, or a Python code. So I have some, some code prepared here already, uh, but you can also create a new worksheet. Let's, let's use the SQL worksheet. Here in this worksheet, uh, you would need to define the context of this worksheet. So we would need to pick a database. I will choose the Snowflake sample data, which is a database uh, shared by directly by Snowflake. Uh, so you will also have an access to it. Uh, we can pick some schema uh, and that's, that's our context. We can also like highlight the statement, but it doesn't really matter here. And also the context of it, uh, we can change the, the role here. Uh, as previously said, um, I will run it on the account admin and the, we will run it on warehouse, uh, extra small. The warehouse is basically your compute engine for Snowflake, it's super important. So at the beginning, you'd usually uh, run everything on extra small to do not pay too much for it. So let me just click on the database. Here we can find all the databases, uh, schemas, also like some objects related to it. So let me find a schema of its context. And here we can like check the tables. So we will try to like select one of these tables. Let's say customer, we'll use the limit. We'll run it and then we got the results. Works pretty nice. Uh, if you want a chart, you can also uh, have it as a chart. Very cool to, to play on. 
uh, let's get quickly back to the results. And here on the right side, um, you might find the query details. It's like super important tab because when you click this one, the, the query ID, you can check the query profile of, of this query, which we've just run. So you can check step by step how this query is actually running. So here is like the table scan, then it's like the limit and the presented results. This is like very simple one, but uh, for a joins, or, or some aggregation, you might find it really useful to, to check how your queries is performing and to uh, check for possibilities, uh, for possible bottlenecks, right? <clears throat> so let's get back to our uh, worksheets. The second part, uh, the second one is like notebooks. If you are familiar with uh, Jupyter notebooks, it's kind of like similar. It's, it's really nice to, to use it as a quick data visualization when you present some stuff. Uh, here I've prepared uh, this, this uh, queries for my next video. Uh, so, uh, so you can check, like basically compare um, those SQLs between each other to document it with uh, some markdown and also uh, also have some Python code here. So basically you can mix SQL with Python. It's super useful for data analysts and, and data scientists, uh, but you're, you'll see it more in, in my next video. You can also connect it to the Git repository to uh, have a database as a code, which is also a pretty new feature. Okay, so let's go back into a project. You can also create the streaming applications, uh, manage a dashboard here and application packages. It's not really important when you start, so we'll, we'll skip it. The other main uh, tab, which you'd already seen is, is the data and database. Uh, so here, as previously seen, you can check like, all your um, data sets here. So we'll open it once again. Here are only the tables, but uh, you can check also here for views, pipes, stages, and many, many more. So most of the objects you are looking for uh, will be uh, sitting here um, and if you want to bring the data into Snowflake then uh, there is a lot of different possibilities to, to load the data. Uh, you can load it directly into a table, uh, to a stage, uh, you can create external stage, I mean like, like external connection between like for example Amazon S3 and your Snowflake account to store the data uh, in S3 and like to read it only in Snowflake. And you can also use a lot of different connectors like for ServiceNow, for uh, Google Analytics and many, many more. So this one you would also uh, probably use very often. In data products, there is uh, a lot of data products. First of all, the marketplace where you can share the data, uh, you can sell them on the marketplace, which is like super cool. Uh, or you can even buy it from another company uh, if you need like some uh, some commerce data, so some marketing, some um, weather uh, data. This is really cool. Um, a lot of them is offered for free. Let's let's check the marketplace here. And as you may see, there's over 2,500 data products. So there's like really, really a lot of them. Here you can also find uh, an application, for example, for cost optimization for Snowflake. So if you are looking to understand your uh, credit leakages, um, and if, if the Snowflake costs you too much, you can also install this ap native application uh, into your account, which most of them are totally for free and uh, it will analyze which settings you can you can improve to uh, to optimize the cost. This is like really cool. Here in the apps, uh, it's like basically your apps. In private sharing, you can find all the data products which are shared to you or from you, so you can manage it here. Um, at the start, you would not really use it that much. Same with provider, student, and in a partner connect where you can find a bunch of different connectors for data integration, data transformation, uh, business intelligence. So you might find it useful also here to bring it's with the with these connectors. It will be it is much easier to bring your data uh, directly uh, into a Snowflake.
Another tab regards AI, which is still in preview, but it's really cool. You can build your AI models here directly in Snowflake when it comes to forecasting, anomaly detection, and classification. So you can here create and manage those those models. So you can so you can come here and, and play around with AI models if you're AI enthusiast. And the next one, monitoring, is like super important. Like the query history is the tab where you will you might spend a lot of time uh, to analyze how your queries uh, are running. It's like very similar to what you have seen already. So this is the, the, the this query ID. As you may see, select star from customer. It's the query which we have run like a couple of minutes ago. So we can like click it. And this is exactly the same view in a query profile, which we previously had. So here in this tab, you can check like all the query history, how it runs, uh, if it's success, who runs it on, on which warehouse, uh, how long it, it takes. So a lot of useful information, which you will definitely use uh, when, when you are starting with Snowflake. Copy history and task history is basically the same, but uh, but for copying the data files and like the managing the tasks as well. Um, dynamic tables, it, this is kind of the same. And the trust center, which is a uh, very new feature here, as you may see, I don't have the access to trust center because I would need to, to switch the role. So that's why it's, it's the reason uh, why it is so important to always uh, check your role. This step is regards to data uh, security. So you're not gonna use it that much, I would say. Uh, not at this moment, at least. Uh, the governance, the same, the data governance. If you are a uh, Snowflake administrator, then this tab will be definitely for you. So this is like the main dashboard and like the tag objects, which, uh, which you can tag some objects to, to better monitor the data. And also the last tab, which is also super important, the admin and the cost management. In the cost management tab, you can basically check how much you've spent on Snowflake. Uh, it can be spent in, in dollars or in credits. So here I've spent like 30, 34 dollars in the last seven days, but hopefully it's a trial account. So, so I have like uh, 366 dollars left to, to spend in the next 25 days. And also how much do we pay for a compute, price credit, like average daily cost. We can also check the most expensive queries. So here uh, our notebook execution was running for four and a half hour. So it cost definitely a lot, uh, even on a extra small warehouse. We can also uh, check the consumption as a graph and also uh, between different accounts in the same organization. And we can also set up a resource monitor to monitor our Snowflake credits. So if we are running out of, of the credits soon, uh, then we would like, for example, get a notification or we will suspend all the warehouses to do not exceed certain amount. So this is like pretty cool feature. You might use it often if you are a database administrator here. In another one, we can check our warehouses. Uh, there is quite of them here. Uh, if it started, suspended, like the clusters, how many of them are running, the queue, like who's the owner of the warehouse. So that's that's actually great to, to know. And also the users and roles. The Snowflake is like the default user uh, created with the Snowflake account. Here is, as you may see, like, like Snowflake Ninja. This is like my user. <coughs> And also we can check the roles and uh, how many of them has been granted to a particular users. So like the account admin role, uh, as we've mentioned previously as, as a default one and the Snowflake Ninja user has been granted this, this account admin role. This is really important to understand how the roles are working because if there will be any situation, uh, like for example, you know that a particular table exists, but for some reason uh, you don't have an access to it or you are unable to see it, then there's like a very high chance that you are using a wrong role or you have no permission to, to that object. This is like really common. So 
really keep it in mind. Also like the accounts, uh, which are linked to, to this organization and other like security and, and billing and, and, and terms stuff, which is not, not really interesting here. And also if you want to quickly create uh, the data and create a, a, a worksheet or SQL worksheet, Python worksheet, some notebook application, you can also uh, click it here. It's like the really quick one to, um, to, uh, to work on in, in the user interface. <coughs> Let's say I would like to create an external table and then it just creates a, a template uh, how predefined template template which I can use while creating an external table, which is like really cool. So there's a lot of stuff you can do here. Uh, you can check which which one you're using, and as you may see, like before running, you will need to set the context. That's right. This is what I said. So these tips are also uh, useful. If you are new to Snowflake, I really recommend them. I really recommend you to to also check them out. And that's it. I hope you now understand how to navigate it and perform some basic operations in Snowflake. Keep in mind, and new features are added really quickly, so this interface may change in the future. If something is not working and you are certain, it should always check your role first. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Ciao.